Hello everyone and welcome back. It is time now for another networking video. These days we are talking about voice over IP and in this series of videos we're working through the packet guide to voice over IP from O'Reilly. And in this case we're working through chapter one. This is actually part two in that series and we are just trying to get familiar with some of the ideas and concepts involved in voice over IP. Now this is the topology that I showed you last time. Central to every voice over IP network is Ethernet. So what I want to get across here is that while voice over IP does have its own equipment, its own protocols, it is really based on the same network that we are used to using uh, for everything else. So we have Ethernet, we have IP, we have TCP, we have UDP. So all of those processes still need to be in place. We also need support from the infrastructure. So on this list, you can see DHCP and TFTP. Those are, these are basic features of every network. Well, maybe not so much TFTP, but certainly DHCP. Now, the guy that controls this whole thing for our voice over IP infrastructure is the call server. Phones, when they come up, talk to the call server, they register, and they also use the call server to make phone calls. Uh, one of the other features of a voice over IP network, at least one that becomes very important, is the power over Ethernet. Modern switches today provide power to many, many devices. Access points are another example. But phones need power over Ethernet. Uh, actually, well, they don't need it, but we certainly prefer that they use power over Ethernet. So we don't have to worry about power adapters and all kinds of things like that. So let's talk about some basic operation here. So this is going to be true of most voice over IP uh, infrastructures. What happens first, I sort of rearrange things a little bit here so we can kind of get them in order. But when you plug in a VoIP phone, the first thing that's going to happen is that there's going to be a power over Ethernet um, negotiation. And so the switch will begin supplying power on the pins that are not being used by Ethernet. So that's 4, 5, 7, and 8. After the phone comes up and starts powering up, it's going to go through its boot process. And among other things, it's going to load its, its operating system. And then eventually, it'll ask for an IP address. Now, it's very common for phones also to determine whether or not they have the latest and greatest software. So they go out and they'll, they'll reach out and touch a TFTP server and then if they need to, they'll download configurations or changes uh, to the BIOS, things like that. Now, once a phone call is being made, uh, well, in order to make a phone call, the first thing you need to do is register with that call server. So a phone will come out to the call server and say, here I am. Um, sometimes users will log in with a password, but the phone registers with the call server. So the call server knows uh, what phones it's supposed to control, Sometimes there's an access control, sometimes there's security, and then there's also the idea of the call server getting in there to help phones reach their destinations. Once a call is made, again via the signaling protocol, the phones will actually start sending voice samples back and forth. And to do this, we actually use the transport protocol. And then finally, when we're all done with our call, we will drop back into our signaling protocol again, and that's just to terminate the call. So let's talk a little bit more about the, the signaling protocol and the transport protocol here. I may have mentioned previously that the signaling protocols that we're concerned with today are H.323, SIP, and Skinny. Now we will have videos on all three of these, and of course each one of them has a chapter uh, devoted to it. But just for right now, we should know that there are three major signaling protocols out there. There are other proprietary ones and, and uh, others that are beyond this, but these are the big ones with Skinny also being proprietary from Cisco. H.323 is a little older. It's very complex. So the world is really going to um, SIP. We're adopting SIP. Now, I mentioned that the call server is the big dog in the middle of all this. And all of these communications between phones and the call servers occur using this signaling protocol. And when you want to make a call, you also use the signaling protocol. Now, when phones actually make a, a call, Right? They'll go up to the call server and say, I want to call this destination, and then it gets made. And then there's one of two architectures that will happen. Once that occurs, once the destination is actually ringing and then we pick up, we actually start sending those voice packets back and forth. Now, 
RTP, or real-time protocol, that's the protocol that we're going to use to make that happen. There's a significant difference between RTP and our signaling protocols. And again, hey, guess what? We've got a chapter on RTP as well. But there's a fundamental difference between them. Now, we have two architectures for handling this. The phones can actually, actually send these back and forth directly, or they can send them up to the call server and then back down. RTCP is the control protocol associated with um, RTP, and we can use that to track performance and quality. When we hang up, we go right back to that signaling protocol again. And again, with messages going back and forth between uh, the call server and the endpoints, and sometimes between the endpoints themselves. Now, I thought it might be kind of fun for you guys to be able to take a look at what a conversation looks like in terms of the packets. Now, what we've got here on the left is an H.323 conversation, and on the right, we have a Cisco Skinny conversation. These have a similar architecture, and if you take a look, I hope you can read these, we can see that at the top we've got DHCP, followed by TFTP, and then we drop into the signaling protocol. And again, H.323 on the left and Skinny on the right. Now, just so you're not get fooled, H.225 is actually part of the H.323 suite. And then we've got a call in there, and I cut out some of the packets, but there we see the call. It's RTP, and then we drop into the signaling protocol again when we when we terminate the call. So there you have it. That's what you're actually going to see. And as you work through the examples in the book, or you might be doing them in the lab as an assignment, this is the kind of thing that we're looking for. And understanding this flow, and understanding this flow can be important for setup, for troubleshooting, for quality service, and for security. Now, VoIP has a lot of issues associated with it. We've got quality of service, we've got security, we've got the infrastructure, we've just got, you know, getting the doggone thing up and running, getting systems to talk to each other. So there's a tremendous amount that goes into successfully running a VoIP infrastructure. But today we talk less about voice over IP and more about unified communications. Now, we always like to start with voice over IP because unified communication systems have voice over IP at the you know at the center center of their whole thing. So we sometimes say that the heart of unified communications is actually voice over IP. But unified communications is sold with a completely different idea in mind. So we we think about voice over IP, we think about saving money. When we think about unified communications, we think about things like productivity. And so uh, some of the buzzwords are collaboration, shared workspaces, and then of course we have all of the other forms of messaging that we're trying to get integrated with our voice over IP system. So no matter the idea is no matter how you communicate, you know, we're going to use this centralized sort of infrastructure to get this all to work together. Another really big idea is presence. Where are you? Can you be found? Can you identify whether or not you're online, available? Can somebody get to you when they need to? And can you get to other folks when you uh, when you need them? My friend Emilio DiLorenzo uh, used to like to say that he would decide how to send a message and you would decide how you're going to pick it up. And certainly there was nothing in there that said those two things had to be the same. In fact, you had a wide variety on both ends, the sender and the receiver. Well, thanks very much for visiting the channel. Remember that this was Chapter 1 in the Packet Guide to Voice over IP. We're going to be moving on to Traditional Telephony Basics. That'll be Chapter 2. Feel free to look around the channel here, see lots of other videos, and you can also go to BruceHartBenz.com. We're always building resources and things like that out there. So thanks again for stopping by, and may your packets always reach their destinations.